Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for joining me again. On today's episode, we're going to be making carbonara. Carbonara is a very highly debated, but very classic Italian dish. Carbonara also has five key ingredients, which include pasta, eggs, cheese, black pepper, and guanciale. There are a lot of different variations to carbonara, and we're going to be showing you our own kitchen sink version of carbonara today. The preferred pasta for carbonara is spaghetti, which is what we're using today. It also is better to use dried pasta than making fresh pasta. Dried pasta is gonna add a little more starch to your water, which is gonna go into your sauce later and help with emulsification. Traditionally, carbonara is also made with guanciale, which is the pork jowls or the pork cheeks. It's a really nice fatty cut of pork. It's also cured and has specific seasonings on it, which make it really delicious, but it is not necessary. We are using Italian sausage in this video because that's just what we had in the fridge and it'll work just fine. And to compensate for the lack of fat that is in the Italian sausage already, we're gonna use pork lard. We're gonna be taking the Italian sausage out of the casings and just cooking it like you would any other ground meat. Black pepper is absolutely crucial to your carbonara. It's gonna give it a little spiciness that's gonna cut through the creaminess of your pork fat, of your cheese, and the egg yolks. You wanna make sure that you use a very hard cheese for your carbonara. Pecorino is traditionally the number one choice, but fresh Parmesan is a very close second, and that's what we're using today. Uh, the difference between the two is that Pecorino is made with sheep's milk, uh, it has a tangier flavor because it's aged for a shorter amount of time. Parm, on the other hand, is made from cow's milk. It has very nutty and salty flavors, and it's aged for at least 12 months. Also, if you're gonna go with Parmesan, make sure you're finding the best quality Parmesan you can find. Parmesan Reggiano, that's already still on the rind, and that is great because you can use the rind for other things, but you definitely wanna stay away from the powdery stuff that comes in the green plastic containers. If it's already pre-shredded, that's okay, but you wanna make sure it's real Parmesan, not powder. The eggs you use are kinda like any produce you wanna get. The fresher is definitely gonna be better. If you get farm fresh eggs, just like farm fresh produce, those flavors are gonna come through a lot more. We're using grocery store eggs in our dish today. They are organic, but if you don't even have that, it's okay. You just wanna make sure you have enough eggs to have at least two extra yolks to add a little more richness and creaminess to your final sauce. For our carbonara, for feeding four people, we're gonna use six eggs. That's four whole eggs and two egg yolks separated. And then we're gonna add our two cups of cheese and we're gonna whisk that all together. When our pasta is finally done cooking, we're gonna add that and the heat from the pasta is gonna slowly cook and emulsify with our pork fat. And that's what's gonna get us a really nice, rich, creamy sauce. When you cook pasta, everyone knows that you have to boil water. But with carbonara, you're gonna need that pasta water at the end. It's gonna help thin out your sauce a little more and it's gonna aid in the emulsification of the sauce when the dish comes together. You wanna be more careful when you're seasoning your pasta water for carbonara because you're already using a lot of salty ingredients like your guanciale and then also the Parmesan cheese has a high salt content. So be careful when you're seasoning your pasta water so the overall dish doesn't come out too salty. If you are using guanciale, pancetta or bacon or something that you're actually going to render the fat out of, you want to make sure that you start in a cold pan or pot and then turn your heat on so that way it's a slow render. You want to make sure you're getting all that fat out without actually crisping up your protein. You want it to be nice and chewy, not crispy. Avoid making bacon bits. It's also okay when you make carbonara to use a non-stick pan. You want to avoid getting anything stuck to the bottom and crisping up. You want to avoid getting fond because all those little tiny brown bits will eventually get into your sauce and it'll kind of make your sauce look dirty. Breaking your pasta before you put it in the water is an Italian sin. If you drop the pasta right into your boiling water, eventually it'll cook and it'll all sink into the pot, but do not break your pasta. As soon as your pasta is cooked and strained, make sure you get it back into the pot and you wanna kill your heat. Don't lose any of the heat from the pasta. As soon as you get it all in the pot, you wanna start stirring up the pasta and your pork fat and slowly start adding in your egg mixture. If your pot is too hot, you're gonna make scrambled eggs, which won't be any good. You wanna emulsify your eggs, your fat, and your cheese, and a little bit of that pasta water all into a nice, rich, creamy sauce. Once you've gotten your sauce to the consistency you like and it tastes really good, it's time to plate. If you really wanna impress the people you're cooking for, you can get a carving fork, use some tongs, or if you happen to have really long tweezers, it'll work too. Just stick it in the pasta, 
twirl enough around and then you're going to slide it right in the center of your plate and it'll give a nice presentation. Grate some fresh Parmesan cheese over the top and you're ready to eat. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what I've been doing, please like and subscribe.